All right. So Steve, you're, you're asking about what is the relationship between um, the work that Highland, um, the Abransky Highland Ong did on game theory, how that influenced um, the design of CBC Casper and how that's related to a uh, desire to have equational reasoning um, in the, uh, uh, in the, um, proof of the correctness of, of our protocol. Mm -hmm. um, so, so just a, just a few things. So, so Abramski and Highland Ong, to the best of my knowledge, haven't written any white papers. I mean, they've written some academic papers, uh, which describe um, a, uh, a formal um, definition of a notion of games, which give a faithful um, and flexible model of linear logic. Um, <clears throat> and I adapted um, some of their formal system to the security of network protocols. And then I described that adaptation to Vlad. And um, in our conversations, he suggested that we could use it to um, to um, prove equivocation and prove and certain aspects of the safety of the protocol. Uh, so, so that's the um, sort of the background. Now, the as if you look carefully at the Bramsky Highland Ong framework, it's not at the level of strictly equational reasoning. There is a lot of equational reasoning that it supports. Um, but it's not at the level, not all the proofs are strictly equational. Um, so, you know, it's, it's more typical mathematics as opposed to um, completely, for, um, completely mechanized, right? Mm -hmm. yep. So the thing that I'm driving towards, so then, you know, roll forward several years and, you know, the, Last summer, I presented the, the definition of the square root of a process and showed how um, the square root, that notion of square root was related to fault tolerance, right? So it's, it's closely related to um, uh, uh, Casper, um, but it's not quite the same as Casper for the reasons that I mentioned, um, which is that um, we have exactly in, for the nth root, we have exactly in processes, not, you know, in or more processes. Um, and so, so it's, it's more linear as opposed, and we need something that's affine in the sense that it's, it's in or more. Um, but, but that, that, you know, that can be related to um, uh, the ah. Uh, the affineness can be related to um, um, <clears throat> uh, notions of fault, right? So how many, the number of faults uh, your system uh, uh, is willing to tolerate uh, can be related to how many of those um, um, processes that are copies you're willing to ex accept as as somehow going down or or behaving uh, incorrectly in some other way. Um, so so that's so there there are some natural refinements that you can make to that uh, equational setting, um, which <coughs> which you know I think it, it is probably it's probably going to be fruitful to explore those um, and 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 get um, a system where, where it's entirely equational uh, proofs, right? The point, of the, the point of that work is that all of the proofs, all of the definitions and all of the proofs are entirely equational. I, can, I could type them into a theorem prover, um, a, you know, a decent theorem prover um, that's, you know, in use today uh, and um, drive those proofs Right, so we could use Isabel or Hall or or uh, twelve or any any one of those, uh, maybe Lean, 
would be a, a good one. Um, and, and get, uh, um, uh, get the proofs of the properties that are established. Um, so that's, that's the, the difference. So, you know, um, using the Abramsky framework, we can get, um, we can get um, English language proofs that are supported by mathematical definitions, sort of more classical, traditional mathematics. Using the um, uh, um, using the uh, the um, square root ideas, we can start to get um, proofs that are entirely equational and therefore checkable by machine. Um, and that's that's what we're driving for is that is that the proofs of correctness where they can be checked by machine are checked by machine. Mm -hmm. there, okay. There, there, there may be, you know, in, in the case of consensus, there may be places where you have particularly, you know, you have high complexity in the correctness, uh, the, 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 the properties that you wish to establish. And so mm -hmm. it, it, it might be that, that there are some areas where um, a by hand proof is still going to win the day, <laughs> so to speak. Uh, mm -hmm. over over mm -hmm. something that we can push through a theorem prover but we can always be hopeful mm -hmm. okay yeah i guess the reason why i've sort of latched on to this idea of the equational reasoning of uh our cbc casper is i see it as at least for me personally as sort of a a vehicle to to kind of get an understanding of of you know the, the basis and foundation of of our platform being the consensus model so uh, yeah. I guess it, I, my hope is if in time, and, you know, this is, it's, it's more of a, a, a journey than a, than a race for me, you know, over time, you know, to, to get a uh, understanding of the uh, Abramsky Highland Ong uh, paper, academic paper, and that I can start to uh, get it, you know, better understanding of our, our uh, in time of our, our consensus model. And then, you know, when we do get to that point to, um, uh, to you know, to, to, to do the equational reasoning for that, if, you know, I can maybe be in the room and, and listen and, and, and sort of put the pieces together. Uh, and, and, and I think that, that goes to, you know, when, you know, our chain has created a product and a service and the, the, the basis of that is you know our you know our, our our platform you know our, our proof of stake and uh the more insight and understanding of what this product and service that our chain has created for people to use the the, the you know the more i can speak to it and um and help people in in uh everyday terms relate to it so it's um yeah, you know, I, I, I see, and whether I'll be able to have, you know, to the degree I'll be able to uh, follow along and participate in this, it w w remains to be seen, but, you know, it's, um, I'm kind of putting the pieces together to kind of understand, you know, you know, the, what the importance of this is, and it's, and then how about going to kind of bring it into, into reality. Sure. Sure, that, that makes sense. So, and again, I, I just I just want to point out that there's a there there are differences in the methodologies between um, um, the Abramsky Highland Ong work and the work that I did, and there's also differences in the formalism, right? So the the formalism that I use um, critically depends upon the use of the row calculus. Um, Abramsky Highland on games, uh, you could think of as not making a commitment to um, uh, a specific process calculus. Um, they're, they're, they could be they could be characterized in lots of different calculi, uh, and in particular, um, uh, it was well understood that um, Luke Ong went. Um, when doing his calculations for strategies, game strategies, he would write them down in the pi calculus. Um, and that led to the work of Honda, Berger, and Yoshida, 
on um uh you know the connection between pi and games and certain type systems mm -hmm. uh so also it should be understood that highland and ong sort of were working independently from abramsky and malakaria and mccusker um but they talked a lot in fact when i was at Imperial, there was there was th these games seminars um, that were you know where we would you know we would visit we would visit Oxford and then Cambridge and then and then uh, Imperial right they would rotate and <clears throat> people would present various uh, um, work that they they'd been doing um, in you know work that was in progress. Um, so, um, uh, so there was there was a lot of cross pollination, and it it's ge generally you mention them together because you know they prove the same results, and they're the 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 things are are kind of cut of the same cloth. But it's really Highland and Ong that first come up with the idea of justification pointers. Mm -hmm. um, so. Mm -hmm. Uh, so just that's just a, su a subtle a subtle point, um, but you know so it's 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 worth mentioning. Yeah, um, yeah. And, and the justification pointers are the things that we use the most in mm -hmm. reasoning about network security. Yeah. I don't um, make use of the justification pointer structure at all to um, to do the reasoning that I do about the square root. Uh, however, as I point out, you know, um, there's there's nothing in that work that deals with m malicious, malevolent, or faulty or otherwise faulty um, uh, processes. It's assumed that they're following the protocol definitions that I give, as opposed to some of them lying and cheating or attempting to steal. Um, so, uh, adding in the justification pointers as a part of the message flow would be one approach to um, getting some of that, you know, affineness that I was talking about before, where some of the processes are are faulty. Um, so, you know, in the in the square root stuff where I described the um, the protocol, everybody's um, communicating the coin flips. Uh, and when they communicate the coin flips, they follow rules about the communication of the coin flips. Um, now, one, one way uh, for um, them to lie would be for them to say, out of one side of to, or to one side of the network, the coin flip was this, and to the other side of the network, the coin flip was that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, uh, and then you'd you'd, you'd have um, a certain kind of malevolence. Now you can um, you can uh, overcome that not only with the uh, the justification pointers. Uh, you could also just use error correcting codes. Uh, um, as a, as a, an approach, and that would get you back in the realm of liveness. So there's there's lots and lots and lots of work to do here, um, uh, in in terms of expanding uh, or connecting the the two approaches. Um, and, and it was just it was important to me um, to try to 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 call out the the differences and and what the goals are. Right? For me, the goal is to be able to uh, conduct a mechanical proof. Um, and, you know, there, there are going to be certain, certain proofs that are just not, we're not at the point where we can think about how to mechanize them in, in mathematics, right? It's just like, that's just the, the nature of the beast, uh, you know? So some of these crazy, weird, proofs about you know um uh i i uh you know things that have uh you know su sufficient complexity like 
you know, some, some, some proofs about um, uh, fields, uh, which are, you know, not representable as Levere theories and, or, you know, th things that are, are not easily representable as uh, computable structures or things that, that, you know, have, have inside them, you know, lots and lots of cases where you're, you're essentially doing something halting hard, but someone has come up with a clever trick to avoid those pitfalls. That's still, still the domain of, of human beings. Um, and, you know, at this point, I can't say that we wouldn't find, um, we wouldn't find some area of uh, the consensus properties that, uh, that, uh, you know, has, has, has that level of complexity. Mm -hmm. um, but, 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 but at least, at least for the time being, we ought to set our sights on, you know, mechanical proofs. And if we come up against a particular area where, where we don't, we don't quite understand or have the cleverness to, to mechanize the proof, well, that's really, that's really important to know. Mm, okay. Right. Well, 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 good. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad I kind of talked about this. This is, uh, this, this is for, for me, I'm all interesting stuff from, from this perspective. So, and, you know, and it, it, it I, I kind of get an appreciation for, um, you know, your, your journey in mathematics, you know, you, it seems you, you kind of knew, uh, you know, in the direction you want to go and, and you being in, in uh, at Imperial and with all these mathematicians that were, you know, you know, doing their, their line of research, you know, you being there must, you know, I just kind of see that as, uh, you know, an exciting time uh, being in the mix of all the, all the, the, the dis discussion around, you know, the, uh, 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 concurrency and and, and uh, the game theory and everything uh, and everything was sort of coming together for you. So it's uh, that must have been an exciting time for you. Uh, yeah, sure, it a absolutely was. And I and I I have to say that you know uh, Abramsky's influence on my thinking has been profound. In particular, the um, uh, it's not just the game theoretic stuff, which is quite you know interesting and um but but abramsky's paper computational interpretations of linear logic mm -hmm. uh where he goes through you know three different he, he runs the same program three times right he starts from intuitionistic logic then he moves to intuitionistic linear logic and then he moves to classical linear logic so each mm -hmm. time he's sort of refining the logic and in each time each case he gives a model of computation that is correct by construction with respect to the logic mm -hmm. um and you know it's like that that to me it was like okay this is the way forward <laughs> mm -hmm. right, right right we 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 have we, we have to develop software this way mm -hmm. um, um and so that that had a profound impact on on the way i approach software development um at mm -hmm. the at the same time you know the work that he did on domain theory and logical form where you know he has an algorithm for generating a logic uh, that corresponds precisely with the uh, the model of computation given in a in a particular domain. Um, that was that was also you know the the seeds for operational semantics and logic. Right, right. So, so I, yeah, I, owe, and, and, I owe a lot to Abramsky. You know, his particular way of thinking about things was very influential. Fascinating. Well, good. There, there's, we've got a few people on the call. And just for anyone who um, joined, Greg is just sort of fielding questions on topics of that anyone has uh, any particular interest in. So if there's any topics that anyone's burning in their mind that they want to get answered, now's the time to, to ask. Yeah, so I'm, I'm uh, thinking about uh, uh, what you were talking uh, related to, to uh, geometry and how uh, uh, just by using uh, uh, 
uh, real numbers is uh, like we can we can do uh, uh, we can have more structure than than the real numbers, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm trying to somehow understand and. Uh, can you maybe? Uh, can you maybe? Um, yeah. So I wasn't. I wasn't. Some, I was saying something a little. Yeah, I was saying something a little different. What I was saying is we okay. can have different different structure. So so the, the real the real numbers um, give us. You know the 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 insights of analytic geometry um, make it clear that we can use um, the real numbers to locate things, right? So, so you know, we, we know what it means to locate um, point, you know, points in a data set on the number line, right? That's yeah. a, and that, that, that's a common way of uh, approaching um, quantitative data uh, to, to give, you know, to make use of our geometric intuition. And by, by the way, you know, this, this idea of making use of geometric intuition is really important because there's, there's several million years of evolution that has gone into the production of our visual cortex. And we are really good at processing geometric information. Um, so, so, <clears throat> So if, 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 if you want to make use of, of, you know, primate superpower, <laughs> well, one of the primate superpowers is this, you know, the, the processing of geometric information via the visual cortex. Um, so, so this is, this is, you know, really very, very um, important in, in talking about uh, human cognition and, you know, human ability to, uh, 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 um, understand and manipulate uh, abstract data, right? When you can put the abstract data into a geometric setting, then you're availing yourself of, you know, really, really powerful computer <laughs> yeah. or computa computational apparatus. Uh, so that that's, that's, has been one of the historical motivations for, you know, con for analytic geometry, for turning quantitative data into geometric interpretations. Um, but, then over, but then over time, people wanted to get crisper and crisper about, you know, what that, what that process is. Uh, so one of the questions, one of the foundational questions is, well, what is a geometry? Right? So um, uh, Euclid attempts to formalize what geometry is. So he puts forward you know, a, a set of logical assertions um, that are supposed to be self-evident. And from those assertions, you can, you can build a, a you know, a, a geometric system. And then people begin to notice that, that one of these so-called self-evident uh, assertions is not particularly self-evident, <laughs> namely the, the parallel lines, um, right? Um, <clears throat> And, and so when people, people start to think about it a little bit more, they realize you could drop that or you could modify it uh, and get um, geometries that have high utility. Uh, and, and once that was done, then suddenly there was this plethora of geometries. And now this question of what is a geometry is much more um, urgent. Right. When when does a collection of assertions constitute a geometry? And by the way, um, there's this whole realm of what are called finite geometries. That um, uh, there's a beautiful book by Jennifer Batten on where where she explores you know what does it mean to you know to have some system of assertions about points and lines um, that. Uh, uh, that constitutes a geometry and, and generates notions of finite geometries. So um, one of the pr premier examples of a finite geometry is the Fano plane. And as you may recall, I've, I've, I've shown how to encode the Fano plane uh, and all the, and actually, in fact, all of the geometries that are considered by Batten in her book. 
using um, the row calculus. Um, so that was like a first step to, to um, connecting geometric information to some computational setting. Um, but uh, uh, back to this notion of, of um, what is a location, right? So the, the core insight of analytic geometry is that we can, we can think of a number as a, as a, um, as a location, right? And, and, but then when you start to think about the structure of the reels themselves, that starts to get um, squishier again. And the reason is because the structure of the reels is out past what we can compute with. So while it's a, while it's a, it's a great, um, it's a, it's a, it's a powerful insight. It's not one that um, uh, we can easily render to, uh, to a computer. We can draw things, but we, but, but, you know, exact real computation is not something that we can, we can do very well. Uh, so, 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 so now if we start to look at the re the structure of the reels. Um, well, there are a couple of proposals that ha bear a family resemblance. You know, so one is the data kind cuts, you know, everything to the left of the point and everything to the right of the point, right? So that this kind of splitting of the real line into, you know, what's on the left and what's on the right. And that's um, in many ways shares something with the, um, the kind of splitting that you find in Conway games, which is another way to talk about the structure of the reels. Um, so if you, if you hold in your, in the back of your mind, this insight that, um, uh, you can think of a location as a kind of splitting in terms of a context, let's say everything to the left and, you know, a sub gadget, which you plug in on the right. Um, then you get, um, then you're starting to get something that looks remarkably like what you find in the zipper, which is again, splitting an object into a context and the thing you plug into the hole in the context. Is that, is that making sense? Yes, yes. So can, can I ask you a, a, a sub question? Uh, uh, yeah, sure. Where, uh, so, so now, now uh, you're explaining uh, like, uh, if we have a one line uh, with the reels, uh, we don't have this dimension uh, at all. We, we have only, only like two dimensions, right? Left and right. And uh, with splitting... Well, one, one, one dimension. That's, oh, not, that's not two dimensions. One, it, you can oh, go yeah. positive or negative in that dimension. Two dimensions would be two, in, two independent mm -hmm. uh, positive and negative directions. Uh, I see. I see. So, so uh, are you saying that uh, now we are extending this uh, to more than one dimension with, when we are talking about this uh, structure that we can that we can have context and uh, substructure, or we are still that, in this one dimension? Uh, so, so the notion of dimension is a separate thing. The, the notion of dimension okay. is has has more to do with. Um, how many different, I mean, completely independent ways you can do splittings, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, so as you add to, so that, I mean, that's the nice thing about um, the real based um, locations because it's compositional in the notion of dimension. To add a dimension, you add another copy of the real line. Mm -hmm. Right. That's that's the so that's why R N is sort of your prototypical geometric structure, and by R N I mean, you know, N copies of the real number line. And I was I was simplifying the discussion to just talk about one copy of the real number line. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, because already when we have one copy, we can start to see the splitting behavior. If you want to go to different dimensions, 
uh, and using the analogy, then you would have um, in different data structures, different kinds of data structures even that you split. I mean, you might, it might be the same data structure that you're making independent copies of. Mm -hmm. uh, in your, in your uh, example for uh, final plane, you have m more than one dimension, right? Because you, I mean, you, you have three dimensions. No, you only yeah. have two, um, but, mm -hmm. but that's because you can embed it. That's an, but, it, but it doesn't, mm -hmm. uh, I don't really talk about dimension. Again, the notion of dimension in a finite geometry I mean, you have to you have to build up the notion of dimension. We don't. I didn't address the notion of dimension in finite in the in the in the models of finite geometry. But um, but the point is that you would you could just um, pull back the notion of dimension through the um, uh, through the 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 representation because essentially what happens is the finite geometries all get encoded as particular flavors of graphs. And I have a general algorithm for representing graphs in the row calculus. Um, and then you can give a definition for your different collection of graphs. You can talk about an, um, a well-founded notion of dimension. And then you can just because we're encoding all of the graphs, <laughs> we can we can take whatever property you're using of your graph to give a notion of dimension, and move that over. Yeah. Um, so 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 dimension is a is a separate idea. What we're what we're talking about, and and that has to do with degrees of freedom. Um, what we're, what we're talking about here is. Um, uh, just left and right, you know, split, uh, context <laughs> and sub-object, which is essentially one dimensional. Um, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Th this is all very helpful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I, I mean, there's, there's a connection um, between the, uh, the square root idea and this notion of dimension. And when you think about it, um, the square root operation is not closed on the reals. In particular, when you take the, the root of a negative number, um, you get something that doesn't have, that, that isn't on the real line. It doesn't show up anywhere on the real line. So the square root of minus one is not a real number. Uh, and so it's completely independent, um, and so you can you can you can um, um, build up the complex numbers as pairs of real numbers, where the left projection is real and the right projection is understood to be uh, multiplied by i. Uh, alternately, you can treat them as formal sums, right? You can formally add reals and complexes. Um, and when you have, you know, a real number plus a complex number, it's just a pair. Um, now, what's interesting is that for the row calculus, the radical operation is closed. It's defined for all processes. Um, so that means that either processes don't have an analog of negatives or already built into the row calculus is a notion of um, I, a notion of the complex numbers. And I, I haven't gone down the rabbit hole to figure out which of those is the case. Um, but that would, that would give you a notion of dimension. Does, does that make sense? You understand what I'm? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, cool. Uh, these are all very interesting questions, um, but but mm -hmm. but to 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 you know bring it back to your original question. So so the proposal is to use the notion the notion of location that's in a zipper 
to give a um, to give a a, a better um, uh, a more general notion of location that that um, at least in principle could make it possible to define a bunch of geometric notions. Um, in conversation with Christian Williams over the last few days, one of the things he was asking about was um, my differentiability um, idea. Um, and uh, so, so, so the, 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 the point, the point is that when you have a, um, when you have a, um, a, a, uh, uh an overlap so so again the 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 way the way these these uh, general um general frameworks for defining geometries have have been expressed or, or codified um you have a notion of a manifold so you've got some topological structure that's you know you know um uh house dwarf with some other other properties um and uh like it's you know, got a countable basis or um, other 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 kinds of convergence properties um, any anyway um, uh, and then in the and you you paper over that or you lay over that these charts which um, you know for some particular region uh, some neighborhood of the manifold you um, you have you can map it onto the, the real line so you can or not the real line but but rn so you can you can you can think of it locally as having some some rods and clocks which allow you to tell where things are right that's that's the idea of locating stuff in this manifold um and and so the the collection of of these grid-like frameworks, these rods and clocks um, over the manifold is called an atlas. And now it could be that two, so uh, and, and a given uh, framework of rods and clocks is called a chart. And, and two charts might overlap on some, uh, some neighborhood of the manifold. And you, so the, the, there's a requirement that when they overlap, that the, um, the maps uh, associated with the overlap are differentiable. Um, and um, I, uh, I had, I, I've been thinking about that condition for a while and um, I'm following two different kinds of, of intuitions related to that condition. One is, I think it's actually a compositionality condition and, and represents a, a, closure, a closure property with respect to composition. And that was sort of the way I was characterizing it in the Casper standup a couple of weeks ago. But um, the, other, the other way, this differentiability um, consideration we can model differentiability very directly uh, in our setting. And the reason is because um, it's, it's already understood that the zipper um, is um, uh, the one whole context are uh, the derivative of, uh, 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 of a type. So if you have a type T, it's one whole context are given by the derivative. Um, now we have a way of representing the one whole context as these rely guarantee maps, right? That's, that's, that was the insight that Mike and I were working on. So the, so those, these arrow maps are the one whole context. Um, and so if you have some formula phi, then you can talk about, um, the derivative of phi in terms of um, a map that is a rely guarantee map. Or, or another way of putting it is that an instance of the derivative of T will um, inhabit uh, one or more of these um, 
uh, these uh, these arrow uh, types. And so we can we can directly connect differentiability um, to the uh, to the uh, um, uh, to to the apparatus that we've got at hand. So uh, so there's there's a uh, there's a, a lot of promising. Um, um, the, the, the definitions um, that I'm proposing, the analogies that I'm proposing, have a lot of promising structure to carry out the program. Um, but ho hopefully that, that so, so essentially all I'm saying is there's uh, the idea of the, the idea of locating things on the real line and by extension locating things in, you know, um, a, a box that's made of many copies of real lines um, is clear and obvious and the basis of analytic geometry and ultimately what, what gave rise to differential geometry. However, those intuitions and insights don't transport easily when we're talking about structures that are computational. Um, and so if we want to, if we want to like, like not throw the baby out with the bathwater, right? What if, what if we just, we, we wanted to say, well, there seems to be an, uh, you know, some abstraction here that remains um, valuable. Can we follow the pattern um, uh, and, but, but subtly change uh, the way we're interpreting the pattern to line up with um, computational structures. So we, we can give a topology. Uh, so, so this universe of, of where, the, where the points are computations, right? So this would be like, you know, the points are row calculus processes or lambda calculus terms or, or yada, yada, yada. Um, uh, so, so th those those are the points of our manifold, and then the formulae that we get from operational semantics and logical form provide the basis for a topology, and then the zipper provides um, uh, the basis for a notion of chart, and um, because the zipper is a one-hold context. Um, uh, we have a notion of differentiability built in, and so we can um, uh, we can talk about uh, the overlap conditions for charts, in either in terms of differentiability or in terms of these closure properties. And so we can we can build up an analog of the um, the sort of core gadget, the gadget that's at the heart of differential geometry. Um, we can build up an analog of that. Now there's a lot, there's a lot of investigation to see if, if this idea holds, you know, any value whatsoever. It may just be, you know, just a, a, some wishful thinking on my part, but, but the nice thing is it's mathematics. So we can use math to, to go and conduct the exploration and, and get to some kind of consensus about what's going on. So, sorry, long-winded answer, yeah. but. Yeah, 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 this is very helpful. And uh, I, I'm thinking that, uh, so you, uh, uh, my understanding now is that uh, we don't need to go uh, to real numbers as, as some kind of encoding of location, which maybe is not easy to calculate, but we can directly encode our uh, structures as locations, which are the yeah. problems, without this yes. uh, going to the real numbers and then back again. And yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. that's, and this that's is like exactly. similar how, how category theory also says, uh, you don't need to go to the set, but you can work in, in, in this more abstract way. You don't need to yeah. go to the set and then uh, everything uh, is set. Yes, yes, that's right, that's right. So, mm -hmm. the, so the notion of location that we have is, is the pair context plus a subterm that fits into the context. That, that's our notion of location. Mm -hmm. and, one, and once we have this notion of location, then we can 
um, we can we can build up this uh, 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 we can build up a fairly detailed analogy, right? Yeah, that that that's right. Mm. And 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 it's you're you're right to invoke category theory here. In in some sense, I'm I'm taking the the this, this essence or spirit of category theory, um, because you know category theory supports this kind of analogical reasoning, right? Category theory grew out of okay, well we're studying these these algebraic structures and we're studying these these other structures, these geometric structures and these topological structures, and and um, and we we see the connections between the two. So for example. You know the fundamental group associated with the, you know the homotopy classes uh, in in a topological space, right? So um, these groups give you some information about these spaces, and 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 people were were doing this a lot. They were finding, you know, either the the you know some gadget like a geometric gadget or a topological gadget was giving information about some algebraic structure or vice versa. Well, typically, it was the latter where you're, you're using an algebraic structure to give you information about the about um, <clears throat> some geometric or topological structure, and 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 so category theory was was trying to formalize um, this this these these analogy of transporting information from one kind of gadget to another, right? That was that was the the beginnings of category theory, and I'm. I'm returning to the. I'm re returning to the essence of, of you know category theory without invoking category theory yet, because I don't know what the categories are, right? The 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 I don't yet know how to turn the. the there 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 could be lots of different ways to of uh, uh, thinking about you know how computations form a category and i don't want to um i don't want to make a commitment too soon likewise there could be lots of ways that a notion of location forms a category and i don't want to commit too soon because commitments on either side of that analogy um may force um the mappings in a direction that doesn't support what i'm really interested in which is a notion of geometry, which lies in the connection between the two. So what's primary is the notion of geometry. And then once I've worked that out, then I can go and see if that, that the bridge that I built forces a category or a collection of categories on one side or, and or the other. Mm. Yeah, so the notion of geometry is the thing that's building the bridge. And, and then um, it, it, it's the thing that's making the analogy. And after the analogy is constructed, assuming it can be constructed, then I might find the categories that are involved. I see, I see. Yeah. Hmm. And, uh, and, and then you're talking about when you have uh, uh, this notion of uh, geometry, then you, you're talking about uh, uh, putting the logic on this geometry, uh, right? Or something like that. So, so the, the, the thing is that the, I'm building the geometry from the logic. Mm. So I, I, I start I start with um, a universe of, of computations, and since I begin with the universe of computations, well, operational semantics and logical form is 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 just available as an algorithm. So I run the algorithm on that universe of computations, right? And now I get a bunch of logical formulae, uh, and so those logical formulae which correspond to so each formula corresponds to a collection of computations. So now I can, I can then say, I'm gonna interpret each formula as a neighborhood of, of computations. So I'm giving it topological 
information. Right? It's it's telling me what things are close to what things. So these charts on the manifold are like different logics that you can. Uh, not yet. We haven't. We haven't even gotten to charts yet. We're just starting with the okay. topology. So if it, again, so let's look at the let's look at the, um, the 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 manifold structure. You start with, or, or so the 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 um, atlas structure starts with a manifold. So the manifold is a is a topological space. So we have to be able to build a topological space before we ever get to any geometry. We need a we need a topology. So we've got this universe of points, which are computations. Right? And I want to put a topology on it. Now, now that problem has been studied quite a bit, right? So if you look at the Scott topology as an example of a topology on, um, on a, uh, uh, a space of computations, the Scott topology does not enjoy anything like Hausdorff structure. It's, it's not even T1. So, so you, might, you might throw up your hands in despair right away and go, whoa, that's, we can't do that. But we can avail ourselves of the operational semantics and logical form algorithm, and it will generate a logic. So it, it, it's, you know, you hand us the, 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 the uh, we, are, we are given this universe of, uh, of uh, points, which are computations, and because they're computations, we can run OSLF on it. So now we get a bunch of logical formulae. And now we're going to say, I'm going to build the topology, right? And I build the topology by interpreting the extensions, i.e. all the points that, are, that satisfy a given formula as the... the um, the, the basis for um, uh, that, 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 that's a that's a neighborhood. So I'm interpreting a I'm interpreting a formula as an open, and then I can I can I can generate a topology um, from a particular collection of formulae as basis elements for the topology. Um, and now it turns out there's not one such topology because you you know when you when you provide a particular you, you may pick different bases. And once you have different bases, you'll have potentially different topologies. But roughly speaking, what's going on is um, the logical formulae are going to say that things that are structurally similar are near, or things that are are you know only a few steps away in in uh, in in evolution are near. So either they're structurally the same, or they're a few steps away. Um, from in, from a computational reduction point of view, uh, the, those those are the ones that are in the neighborhood of a given computation. So now we have the beginnings of of um, interpreting this atlas gadget. Don't have any charts yet, but at least we have something that plays in the role of a manifold, right? Uh, okay, so it's still it's it's not going to be Hausdorff. <laughs> Um, potentially, uh, depends on certain things. But anyway, um, so 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 it's still a very questionable idea. Right? Um, but but now we want to we want to paste over it with a bunch of charts. So what's going to be the analog of a chart? Well, what a chart does is it gives you um, locations for all your points. So what's the notion of location that we're using? The notion of location we're using is a context together with a subterm. So a context is going to be a term with a hole knocked in it, and a subterm is just a term. So, you know, the simplest possible chart would just be one context and a formula, right? And that will locate all of your subterms. Does that make sense? Yes. 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 So that's a that's a single chart. And now an atlas is going to be a collection of charts. And 
uh, with a with a, an extra condition, which is when the charts overlap, so their extensions have a non-empty intersection, right? Then then you want to impose this differentiability. Um, and so that's 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 where you know the differentiability thing comes in. So that so we 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 the the logic is built in. We we use the logic to generate the topology. And we also are using the struct the logic essentially to generate the charts. Right? Because the, the one hold contexts correspond to arrow arrow formulae. They're they're there are these rely guarantee formulae in our 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 uh, geometry in our um our logic. We need to check the time. Okay, yeah, uh, one minute till. So, uh, very good, very good questions, very good conversation. I really appreciate it. Okay, can I ask you just one, one short question? Uh, yeah, what's that? Uh, recommendation. If I want to think about that, what would be the, the simplest uh, like topolo topological structure that uh, I can start with? Uh, oh, well, oh, well, I mean, the trivial topological structure is the discrete topology, where every single point is an open. That's not very useful because it means that every set is an open. Um, but, uh, um, yeah, uh, trying to think how to, how to get a feel for, you know, Moncrees is a great introductory text on topology. Okay. okay. Yeah. We'll start from there. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Sure. Thanks for the questions. Yeah. All right, folks. I'll see some of you in Dev Stand Up. Thank you all. See you. Thanks. Bye bye.